I've been making YouTube videos for about six years. I have thousands of subscribers from all parts of the world. I have read tens of thousands of comments and private messages. And so the number one thing I ask myself when I go to make a video is, what in the hell can I say to that many anonymous people that would be in any way relevant? And how can I communicate it effectively in a way that it is you know, thoroughly comprehensible to a diverse group of people without alienating too many people. And uh, I guess in the process, every now and then I'll get a comment like this one. At Tooltime9901, I think you should link the video you're responding to first in your description. How can I tell if your arguments actually refute anything he says? I don't know how to find the video you're talking about. No link, no title, and unless just Jack is his username, no username update, please. And so I take this as the person's failure to read. Uh, the uh, title does contain the username of the person in question, and the first link in the description is the video I was responding to. I guess the only thing that I could have done differently was put the words, the video I'm responding to, <clears throat> before the link. Uh, but I, I guess I take it that most of my subscribers have a kind of um, format literacy for YouTube videos. Uh, so if I say the description, you know, they'll know that the description is now on the bottom instead of the side as it used to be years ago, and that they can follow clues um, rather than have everything explicitly spelled out for them. I could have titled it Username Together for Peace, Jesus Fanboy, and then put the video I'm I mean, I, I mean, I could have explained it better, but I, it's almost to me, it reminds me of a manga, whereas uh, Japanese manga is written from the standards of American publishing, you're supposed to read them essentially back to front instead of front to back. And so <clears throat> if you don't know that and you pick up a manga, you might read it the wrong way. And apparently the person who left this comment just can't read the format or follow the clues. And so I wonder, like, how, how, how can I make a video response to somebody who I have known and made video responses to for four or five years now? Maybe not that long, but at least at least three or four years, I've known Jack and uh, Contrapoints. I've known for several years as well, who I made the video before that and the video before that were to him. And I take it that most of my audience, uh, because I get most of my views through subscriptions, uh, probably has some idea either who these people are or w if they're watching my videos and they're at least familiar enough with video blogging and the, the sort of scenario to have some sort of comprehension of what's going on. And um, I, I think I, I had a book from one of my philosophy classes titled An Anthropologist on Mars or Anthropologist from Mars, something like that. And uh, I, I guess it sort of reminds me of this idea, maybe call it a science fiction idea, that if aliens were to come down and try and study human beings, you know, how would they even comprehend much of what we do and say? And, and, and how would we look from a, a point of view of just not really understanding any of this, uh, either linguistically or, or what? what certain symbols or actions represent or, or are predicated upon. Regardless, it's difficult to communicate on a mass level without just talking about uh, points of, of, you know, mass contact of culture. So in America, um, because of mass communication technologies, you c if you like a certain type of music, let's say you like alternative rock or whatever, you can drive from one part of America to the other, um, listening to radio stations. Of course, now there's satellite radio, so you would never have to change the channel. But let's say that you were just using old-fashioned radio, and you're listening to a channel, and it has a playlist of music you like. Um, once that channel starts to fade, you know, when you get far enough away from uh, the broadcasting source, in most cases in America, you can just simply flip the dial and find the next station 
playing the exact same playlist, in most cases owned by the exact same uh, company. The, you know, most, um, most radio stations in America, I think, are owned by Clear Channel, maybe a handful of other companies. And likewise, somebody on the opposite side of the country can be watching the same television shows or listening to the same music as you. And with the Internet, I mean, it's now more and more, uh, you know, everything becomes globalized. You know, the local becomes global. And uh, I guess all or, or most attempts at mass communication um, in some way inevitably tend towards um, shadowing the the larger trends in in mass communication. So you have a show that 10 million people watch or 20 million people watch, and then you have, you know, 15 million people talking about it on the internet. And uh, if there is some sort of major scandal in politics and it's all over the news or Michael Jackson's death, you know, there is sort of like mass attention is focused on you know, one specific event or show or whatever, and then you get this sort of shadow effect. <clears throat> and I guess I've always uh, not wanted to do that. Like, I don't want to be constantly making a video giving my opinion on the, the subject of the moment. And to me, I guess I, my solution that I'm starting to develop for this channel, which I hope to sort of go into the future with is more of a kind of investigative journalism or uh, taking up the stories that interest me and then introducing them to my audience. So, for example, I'm working on one on uh, the problems with college and, uh, you know, not, not necessarily try and write, a def you know, some sort of definitive journalistic article, but at least something that would orient my audience towards uh, all of these other sources of information to form their own picture or um, uh, another another thing that I'm working on is about uh, the persecution of people who are essentially punk rock in uh, countries um, in a lot of different countries really I think this is sort of an under under noticed phenomenon going on in the world is um, the sort of uh, persecution of, of music fans globally and and the the sort of um the politics of of you say i don't know punk rock in the third world as, as you might say so i mean i see some sort of way around uh, just ambulance chasing what the topic of the moment is but it's interesting um how much the discourse is dictated by you know these other um these other like institutions of mass media who I've always kind of like wanted to avoid directly uh, imitating or, you know, responding to because I, I think that YouTube opens up an opportunity to talk about things beyond the scope of what's normally talked about. But at the same time, that also runs into all kinds of communication problems. So that's my rambling video for today uh, for my audience. I would like to know from you what sort of things that you're interested in discussing or hear about or um, things that you might want me to comment on as long as they're, you know, um, substantive. I don't know. Anything. Hit me with your ideas.